removing and changing catchy bead rings. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode 113. So you might want to stick around. For those that are new to the channel, first off, welcome to the channel. Hope you're enjoying this. Hoping that you're finding these videos edifying and uh, useful. But you may not know who I am, even though I seem to say it on every single video. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So... When I talk to you about these things, I'm talking about a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 27 years. What we're going to talk about today is captive bead rings, also sometimes called segment rings or tension rings or pressure rings. Um, basically, what they are is they are a ring with a section cut out of it. And they usually have a bead or some type of closure. They can be balls. They can be gem settings. They can be gem balls. They can be really ornate things that has a hole either drilled all the way through it or two indentations on each side that the ends of the ring set in. And then the tension of the ring or holds the bead captive. Thus the name, captive bead rings. Though they're not as popular as they once were, they can be the source of many piercing fans uh, general uh, frustration they can be difficult to remove they can be difficult to replace but they have the advantage that once they're in there they stay in uh, they're great for long-term wear especially in areas of the body where you do not want a ball to come unscrewed or something to fall off the jewelry now let's get into what you would actually need to change cat to be drink number one clean hands uh, you should always wash your hands before handling a piercing, even if it's well healed. It's a good practice that you should do. Um, also, it's not a bad idea to have uh, some type of exam gloves, either latex if you're not allergic to it or nitrate if you are. Um, stay away from vinyl. They're too slippery. But what you're going to find is that rubber, especially the latex, are going to be a little bit more grippy on that, uh, on that shiny piece of jewelry. If you cannot find exam gloves, which they have been a little bit in short does short supply and very expensive since the pandemic started, at least wash your hands really, really well to remove any excess oils that may be on your hands so you can get a better grip. Next thing would be a water-based lubricant. Personally, I like Surge Lube. Uh, yeah, I did it upright. And I don't know if it's focusing or not. We'll put it up by my eye. Surge Lube. You can find foil packs of this, uh, usually. Uh, also, you can find tubes of this. They're not very expensive. But any water-based lubricant will work, and this is more to kind of reduce the amount of friction or pressure you cause when you change the jewelry. The next thing is a flat surface, preferably something that has raised edges, where you can set up in. Uh, one thing that's really great with this is cooking pans, like uh, cookie pans, those bake sheets that have the raised sides. Um, and then you can cover it with cellophane um, and then maybe a paper towel so you have a nice barrier between anything that may be on the pan. Uh, the reason why I like these is with the edges is because the balls have a mind of their own and they will usually roll. That's why anybody that's lost one realizes that they end up in every nook and cranny of wherever you're at if it's uncarpeted, they will, they're a perfect circle, they're a perfect ball, they're hard, they roll, they bounce and then they roll, and they bounce and then they roll. So if you're setting up, it's a good idea to have something that has edges. What you don't want to do is do this over the uh, bathroom sink with nothing in the sink. Um, if you are going to use the sink, it's a good idea to put a towel inside the sink, uh, kind of to block the drain and make sure that that thing doesn't immediately fall straight down it. Lastly, uh, some possible tools. Now, this is really important, especially with very thick gauges, like uh, let's say anything over pretty much eight gauge, where it's going to be very difficult to remove the ball, just basically to break that tension. Uh, ring expansion pliers are very helpful. Um, if it's in a piercing where the gap that's between the ball, or the, because of the, it's dictated by the size of the ball, is really small and you're trying to get it through an area, it would be a good idea to have ring expansion pliers. And I'll get into that a little bit later of how that problem and how to resolve that problem. 
The other thing would be closures. If you're using expanders, it's a good idea to have something that closes. And what they do is they, they, they close the jewelry. And I'll show you a video example of that, too. Uh, additionally, a pair of pliers. Now, there are specialty jewel, jeweler pliers that are sold that have a, a brass coating over them or section to avoid scratching the jewelry. Most people are not going to have that around the house. You can use like a brand new pair of needle nose pliers, but I would really suggest wrapping the tip with some type of medical tape or cloth tape to kind of reduce the amount of scratches that you put on the jewelry. Now, how do you do this? Well, the first thing you do is you want to determine whether or not it is, in fact, a captive bead ring or if it is a fixed bead ring. Now, fixed bead rings is where the ball or closure is basically attached on one side. Uh, also, hinges or hinged rings are basically the same way. So the way to figure that out is if you grab that ball or bead or whatever it is and try to spin it on the ring, if it is captive, it will spin freely. Um, you can rotate it around. That's why a lot of times people call me and go, it's stripped out. I, I've, I've been turning it for hours and it won't unscrew. So once you've determined that, what you want to do is you want to grab the uh, the ring with, uh, or actually grab the ball with your index and thumb of one side, usually your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, then that side. Grab the uh, the ring with the other side, and then you want to play, apply outward pressure to kind of break that tension of that ring, and it should pop out. Uh, then, to put it back in, you just basically reverse that. To do that, you grab the ring by the uh, by one, one finger and index finger, and then you line up that indentation or hole and then push it back into place. I know I make it look really easy, and I'm going to show you quite a few times of me doing that, but it does take practice. It is a learned skill and it will get easier over time. As I said, it's pretty easy to reinsert it. Generally, what I'll suggest is uh, once you got that ball free, lubricate the uh, jewelry to make it easier to get out of the piercing so it doesn't damage it. And then when you put it back in, it's a good idea to use lubricant on the tip of it to insert it. It just makes it a little bit easier and less, uh, less traumatic. Now, with tools, if you have a large gauge piece of jewelry that is very thick and you can't break that tension, you want to use ring expansion pliers. You basically take the ring expansion expansion pliers, well, that's a mouthful, into you put it into the piercing or the jewelry and then squeeze down. Unlike normal pliers that when you squeeze, squeeze down, it locks together. With ring expansion pliers, it separates. So what it'll do is it'll slowly expand it. You want to do it slightly until the ball is free and falls out on its own or the closure. Now, uh, to put it back in, you basically do the same thing, except in reverse. Uh, of course, lubricate the jewelry when you put it in and take it out. But once you get it in there, uh, Use the, the ring expansion pliers to expand it and then slowly line up or line up the ball and then slide it into place. Before we go any further, if you like this, found it informative, found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. So what do you do if the gap isn't big enough to get around that particular area that's pierced? Uh, let's say it's your nipple and the ring isn't, that hole isn't wide enough to get the nipple out of that area. How do you do that? There's two methods. The first method would be to use that ring expansion pliers to expand and make that gap bigger and easier to slide out. Uh, the other method is to bend it like a corkscrew. Um, usually with thinner gauges, you can do this by hand, but you also may need to use some type of pliers like I mentioned earlier. Now, when you put them back in, if you bent it into a corkscrew, you bend it back the same way you bent it to make the corkscrew so that those ends line up again and then put the ball in like you normally would. If you use ring expansion pliers to expand it to make that gap bigger, then you want to go ahead and use ring closure pliers to squeeze it back together and uh, make it tight enough that it's going to hold the tension back on the ring. So that's it. That's all I have to say about changing captive bead rings and segment rings and et cetera. I'll do one in the future on beaded rings, fixed bead rings, hinged, and all the other wonderful types of jewelry there is out there closure-wise. Uh, look for those in the future. Now, if you like merch, you like swag, you like T-shirts, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. There's also one of those merch bars down below. 
Till next time, here's hoping I'll be piercing the hill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Maybe this one.